guys and welcome to the show. Today I'm finally going to be reviewing my little Tudor Day date, lovely little vintage piece from the early 80s I picked up quite recently. I do apologize, I'm a bit behind with my reviews, but finally I'm getting around to it today. Now uh, I don't obviously need to do a wristwatch check, but I've put it on this clockwork synergy kind of orangey crocodile strap. Unfortunately, it's a really nice strap, but the buckle I couldn't change to the Rolex aftermarket buckle I, I purchased on eBay uh, because it's very tricky to get these buckles off, unfortunately. But this watch I absolutely adore. I'm really, really enjoying it because I haven't, I haven't had a gold uh, piece for a while. In fact, my, one of my first date justs was a two-tone piece. It was fun because gold is really nice to dress up, especially bright colors, kind of different kind of colors like this. Uh, the gold really works with, with colors like that. It's, it's, it's very fun to kind of match. And uh, also I wanted something on a strap that was very dressy. I've always wanted the day date complication. I would have gone for the Rolex day date, but of course, as you guys know, it's frightfully expensive. And at the moment, I, I really don't want to spend that kind of money. Uh, the other thing is, is the, the gold uh, day date from Rolex. It's in platinum, uh, solid gold, white gold, and I, there is a steel version. I think it's quite rare, uh, so therefore it's just almost just as expensive. So uh, it, that really pushes the price up. But I wanted the same kind of look, and I feel that Tudor really is a kind of sweet spot, kind of like that first step into a luxury watch but without really paying for luxury prices. This was a very reasonable, and what made it even more affordable was the fact it didn't have the two-tone bracelet, kind of brought, brought the cost down a bit. I will, if you're interested in finding a deal for yourself, always make sure it's a reputable dealer. The guy I bought from had 100% feedback, he's experienced, he, he, he buys and sells Tudors. They are, it's completely legit, uh, I had it completely checked out, the movement is exactly uh, what it's supposed to be. It, uh, everything is, is absolutely kosher about it and I'm very pleased. It is a bit of a gamble, but if you know what you're doing, you know what you're looking for, you can get a really good deal. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it to uh, kind of first-time buyers, but after a while you kind of recognize what to, what to look for and you can get some really great deals. Anyway guys, enough babbling on. Let's switch perspectives now and have a closer look at my little Tudor Day Day. So let's have a closer look now. This is, uh, this is the reference 94614. This is from the early 80s, and this particular model actually is from my birth year, 1983. It's fate, really. It's, I guess it's destined, uh, it was destined to be mine. I must admit, I wasn't really looking for a two-tone watch. Personally, I think two-tone watches are a bit dated. They are very indicative of the 80s, and that kind of, you are aware of, Harry Enfield, the kind of loads of money generation, um, the Thatcherite era, the uh, the American equivalent, I guess, would be uh, Gordon Gecko, Wall Street, that kind of that kind of age. And this watch really is indicative of that. What's more about this particular watch is that it's it's the watch that it's obviously a, a budget version of the the Rolex day date. Those of you aren't familiar with the Tudor brand, it was started by the same guys who started Rolex. I mean, I've, I've discussed its history many, many times. And you, I'm sure you guys are familiar with it. If you're not familiar with uh, Tudor, have a look at their Wikipedia page. Uh, they are really coming into their own now, but as their brand now becomes even more well respected on its own terms, I find their vintage pieces are really kind of sweet spot in the vintage market. I actually got a catalogue here. This is what's called the Glamour. Now this is its contemporary descendant of the Day Day. And it's funny, it's turned into a woman's watch because it's very small. The size is exactly the same. Uh, you'll see the Day Day complication. They've changed the case obviously, but you know, the same principle is there. It has an ETA movement. And it's a shame that it's, it's become a woman's watch because Actually, I mean, if we look at the version, where is the version without the diamonds? Let's find the version without the diamonds. This diamonds is obviously quite feminine. Um, but there we go. If you see the version here, this is a white dial with no diamonds on the dial. It's, you know, 
I wouldn't mind wearing that. But it's a shame it's become very much a ladies' watch. And due to in part the trend of large watches. But it is going back. And I think watches like these little vintage pieces will really become kind of like hot property in the future. Uh, and right now. Now, I was quite lucky I found this. This was just under, I think, about 1400 I paid. This, of course, all the gold you see here is 14 karat genuine real gold so um, that does push the price up a tiny bit but if you're not buying it with the bracelet this didn't, this came uh, with no papers uh, no bracelet and that is a bit risky but as I said the seller was 100% kosher so I've opened this up it's got the exact movement that uh, it came with and as you can tell there is a lot of patina which we'll go into in just a moment and actually the case hasn't even been polished it's it since uh, it was new you can tell because it's lost a bit of the mirror, lost a bit of its high polish reflection. You can see there's a lot of little marks, but the edges are sharp, you know, it's not, hasn't been uh, overly brushed, which is really something you want to look for you know, when you get a vintage piece, because I can't stand over, over brushing by, you know, especially incompetent uh, watch repairers that do a nasty bad job. Geneva Rolex, uh, this is uh, again typical of this, uh, the early 80s models. And what's funny is we have a Rolex signed crown. Uh, this is just before they started. If you saw my previous Tudor, it had a Tudor crown and um, the bracelet, the come on a bracelet, was also uh, signed Tudor. Well, this one would have, if, if it had come with the original bracelet, it would have been signed Rolex. Uh, Rolex stopped doing this, or Tudor stopped uh, doing this to late 80s. They, they, they started actually putting the Tudor signed crown and etc. And, and you wouldn't have seen these engraved Geneva original oyster case engraved uh, case backs. So this is definitely everything is original of its uh, early 80s 1983 date which uh, also matches up you can look up with the serial number. So let's quickly get the dimensions out of the way. Now I must stress that I have sellotape on my uh, caliper so it's not going to scratch. We're looking at a 35 millimeter diameter really nice and thin with a thickness of 10 millimeters lug to lug we're looking at 43 millimeters and probably one of my favorite things about this small 35 millimeter diameter watch it has a lug width of 20 millimeters which is absolutely fantastic now what that means is is that i can play with as many straps as i want and this really is a strap monster it goes with so many colors in fact let me just get a few straps out just undo this now I'm currently got it, as you see on the box, uh, this is a clockwork synergy strap. Now, I'm not a big fan of the construction of these. These are cheaply done. It's like if we really go in close, let's have a look. This kind of glossy finish is actually on top of a, a different color leather. So this actually comes off, but they are very cheap and they do have nice colors. Now, what I do like about clockwork synergy it's a bit like a bolt action on a rifle. You push this back and it comes out. Now, this is really kind of not needed because we have holes for the uh, spring bars, which is a really nice feature, but this does make changing the strap very, very easy. The reason why I put it on this is because of the color. It just gold uh, really goes with bright colors. Now, if we have a look on the box, we have suede here. Now, just imagine it on, actually, I've got the uh, aftermarket Rolex buckle on there currently. I was planning to wear it. Imagine, imagine it on suede. It would just look, <laughs> you know, gold really goes well with green. Uh, what else have we got? Purple. This is a too much of a racing strap, but the purple would go as well. Uh, probably the best, uh, one of my favorites would be a really nice bright kind of royal blue. God, it looks a million dollars. It really would look a million dollars. It's very, very fun. And I'm really, I'm really enjoying having kind of gold. I've got a little Python strap here. This is um, real Python from an American manufacturer, which I'm going to do a video on very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, as I was saying, let's just move that out of the way. Gold really is a fun color to dress up with. So let's have a closer look. As I move this, you'll see the dial, how it captures the light. It has a beautiful linen dial, which was um, much more popular back then than it is now. And as I move it around in the light with this beautiful 14 karat got solid gold uh, fluted bezel, just really plays with the light. It's blingy, but not in a vulgar way. It's kind of elegant and 
very very 80s and then we have of course the side Rolex crown there uh, 14 carat again beautiful high polish on the side and then matted sorry about the dust matted brushed polish on the top it's quite a wide luck width for a 35 millimeter but it, it works you know it doesn't it doesn't look too overpowering on the strap we have the date and the day at the top and as you can see I get up really really close there there is patina it is faded it's not crisp white background as it would in the same with the date but this is a this believe me is a good sign because if it was crisp and white it would uh, mean that this had been changed and this is the original I mean look at the crisp text yeah it is a bit dated there are imperfections because uh, that it has patinaed the lot the loom does not work whatsoever you know I, I would never expect it to but that but everything is you know the crisp lettering beautiful applied to the logo there's a little bit of kind of patina on it as well but quite crisp hands considering its age the little loom pip here is, is kind of disintegrated a little bit uh, there are kind of telltale signs of, of patina and aging but it's from the early 80s this watch is uh, as old as I am and uh, you know I'm covered in scars so uh, it's normal it's perfectly normal and I, I really think that the patina is kind of character it, it built it's like it's like I've said you know you've got to kind of embrace the scratches and the, the little imperfections because it's character, what makes it unique. It's not humdrum like everything else. And also I'd prefer it to have all these little scratches and dings and things because to me, I prefer that than over polishing, which I really, really do detest. Definitely a fun watch. It's obviously it's a dress watch. Uh, I think two tone, I, it's funny. I was, I kind of had written off two tone, but I think now, you know, I think on a strap, it's kind of, quite elegant and the, the the beautiful linen dial let's just zoom in again that, that beautiful linen dial acrylic crystal on the top again it's original and and in really good nick there are some tiny little scratches which as i move this you'll probably see it is of its day i could have it replaced with sapphire i guess but i i really want to kind of keep its original features the movement is uh as i've said is the 28 34-2 ETA uh, with the day date complication. I I got to say I love this movement. It changes date and day at the same time at 12 o'clock. And I know I have this complication in my SKX, but you know the SKX it starts changing at about 11 at night and finishes changing at three in the morning. This is immediate. So it is obviously a better movement. It's hackable. It's hand windable. If we just unscrew the crown, it's screw down crown obviously. Uh, it's got I believe uh, water resistance about 100 meters, which is fine. You know, you don't have to worry about it in the rain. It's got a, quite a nice feeling to it. It's not as refined, obviously, obviously, it's not going to be as refined as a, as a date, just the Rolex, it's, it's, it's um, cousins. For an ETA, it's, it's fantastic. And my gosh, this thing is accurate. It really is. So we got a quick set date and day, which is really fantastic. 25 joule movement. I'm not sure the power reserve, but uh, it's, it's managed to keep up with my combat sub, so I would presume it's over 40 hours. I'll try and include a little picture of the uh, movement up there somewhere in the screen. Just do a quick wrist shot, and here we go. And as you can see on my skinny wrist, I must admit, 35 millimeters is a great size. Uh, it's very elegant. I love how it plays with the light. I haven't had a two-tone gold piece since oh my oh, my first one of my first date just i had I, it was a two-tone and had a fluted bezel i switched to all steel i just couldn't get into the whole gold thing but i must say i'm really really enjoying this now let's summarize the watch good things well the great thing about it is it's a day date uh, from tudor under fifteen hundred dollars you can find these with the bracelet as well for probably a little bit more we're not talking the ends of the earth i mean the rolex day date what is it now pushing towards 20 grand isn't it so um i'm not even sure how much they cost in the second iron market and 
and it's completely precious metal. So at least the case on this is a little bit sturdier, which I do like. The other plus side is it's, it performs impeccably well. We've got a very good ETA movement, which is going to be affordable to repair and to, to maintain, which is great. An absolute strap monster, uh, which uh, what I mean by that, it just goes with pretty much any color. The gold is really fun. It's a great little dress watch. It's, it doesn't cost the end of the earth, but you're getting something that's horologically respectable at least and to the untrained eye people think it's a it's a it's a date just or a, or a day date uh, in fact i wore this in hospital and i got many compliments from the uh, nurses but it's quite it's quite interesting you can spot which is a, a gold digging nurse by by how they react to your watch <laughs> Anyway, that's another whole nother story. So really a lot of positives. Uh, the negatives, well, the, the loom is completely shot. Well, I expected that, but it's a dress watch, so it's not too bad. Some could see it's patinaed features as a bit of a negative. I don't, I'm, I'm absolutely fine with it. I'm aware it's from the 80s. Another possible negative is the 14 karat gold. It is uh, uh, obviously softer than steel, so you might, you just have to be a little bit careful with it. The acrylic crystal obviously is not going to be as tough as sapphire, so it is a bit more of a delicate watch. But if you're wearing it as a dress piece, you're not going to be doing um, James Bond ab sailing down buildings and jumping into shark infested waters and, and doing all kinds of SAS style assaults on, on embassy buildings. You're not going to be doing all that in this watch, so it's you know, it's a dress watch. It's uh, but having said that, because it's an oyster case. Uh, which I, I neglected to fa to mention. It, it says on the on the dial if this thing ever focuses, oyster prints day date. As it says on the case, it is an oyster case. So you know we've got a, a a reasonable amount of water resistance. I actually wore this the other day washing up, and you don't have to worry about it. You know, so that's so that's great. I, I wouldn't take it in the shower, and I, and I probably wouldn't swim with it. You could swim with a, a brand new date just no problem but this this particular one uh, i wouldn't risk it but at least if you're out in the rain you're caught out in the rain you're not going to worry quite a robust little thing um it can take a, a bit of a knock too because at the end of the day it's just uh, quite an affordable reliable eta okay guys so i'm going to wrap it up there let's take it back to the studio okay welcome back guys so thoughts opinions please let me know down below in the comments certainly a welcome piece in my collection has a that little bit of sparkle but not too blingy just just right for me actually i really needed a solid dress watch in the collection anyway stay tuned i'm going to be doing a state of the collection i now pretty much reviewed uh, most of my pieces i'm going to gather them up the time is right and also it's the beginning of the year so it'll be nice to see uh, how it changes over this coming year anyway guys let me know what you think down in the comments as i said questions queries all the rest of it thank you very very much for watching please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful and i'll definitely catch you in the next one okay guys ciao